Okay, uh, very good morning to everybody. Yeah. Um, we, we come before the Lord today giving thanks to all the blessings that he has given to us. Uh, despite all this difficult situation, um, the blessing that we can see and even blessings that we don't feel or see. Um, so let's start with a word of prayer. Our Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you that despite the situation in the world with this COVID-19, we are still able to meet together, even though it's not physical, but we can still feel your presence in all our homes. And we pray, Father, that as we worship you this morning, that your spirit will be with us and that we will be lifted up as we lift you up. We pray that each and every one of us here will be comforted by worshipping you and praising you because you love us first. We pray and ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, the first song that uh, I like to have is uh, a song that is a Thanksgiving song. I know it's very difficult to actually imagine, especially when you are a, a, a young Christian, to give thanks to God in difficult situations. What is there to give thanks to? So today we will see uh, how God actually watch over us uh, and we will praise him for watching over us and guiding us and giving us this peace. Let's start with this song, uh, first song, Thank You Lord by Don Moon. I come before you today Just one thing that I want to say, say it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For all you've given to me. For all the blessings that I Grateful hearts, with a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, I will bless your name and thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, I just want sickness and heal all my pain. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With a grateful heart, with a grateful heart, with a song of praise, with an outstretched arm, I will bless your name. Lord, 
we do thank you today for all you've done in our lives. And by faith, we say thank you for what you're about to do. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. For loving us, Lord. One thing that we should be thankful is that we know that he loves us. And from John uh, chapter 14, verse 21, it says, Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Frank, you're muted. And one the other blessings that we have uh, and should recognize is we have his peace. And during these horrible times, his peace that he has blessed us with, a peace that the world cannot give or understand, this peace gives us strength uh, to carry on in these difficult times. Uh, Next song is My Peace by the Maranta Singers.
Sorry, yeah, my my because I want to sing. <laughs> my my next reading is from Psalms uh, one to one, uh, verses one to eight. I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth. He will not not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber in it. He who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand, and the sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by light. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. We have his peace, we have his love, and we know that he never slumbers or sleeps, and he constantly watches over us. And even when times are bad, we have this comfort to know that he is with us. And we should focus on what his promises are and focus on eternity rather than in this world. My next song is about how he never sleeps and slumber. Uh, again, by Don Moen, he never sleeps. Um, so let me share again. When you've prayed every prayer that you know how to pray, Just remember the Lord will hear And the answer is on its way Our God is able He is mighty He is faithful And He never sleeps He never slumbers He never tires of hearing our prayer When we are weak He becomes strong Cast all of your cares on Him. Do you feel that the Lord has forgotten your need? Just remember that God is always working in ways you cannot see. That's right. Our God is saying, he is mighty, He is faithful, and He never sleeps, He never slumbers, He never tires of hearing our prayer. When we are weak, He becomes stronger, so rest in His love and cast 
cast all of your cares on him. He never sleeps. The Bible tells us to cast all of our cares on Him because He cares for us. My friend, this is more than a promise, it's a command. So be at rest because today God is working in ways that you cannot see. He never sleeps, He never slumbers. Sleep. all of your cares on Him. Yeah, so knowing God loves us and knowing His peace that He's given to us and knowing that He watches over us constantly and He never slumbers, help us to overcome our fears and give thanks to Him and praise Him and worship Him because He's almighty and strong when we are weak. And so our response is to desire Him more and more, to want Him, to need Him, and to want to have a deeper relationship with Him. So my next song, Lord, I need you and deeper in love, after which we will give thanks for the bread.
temptation comes my way When I cannot stand, I'll fall on you Jesus, you're my hope and stay
want to love you more and more. How I long to be deeper in love. Oh yeah. How I long to be deeper in love. And we have all this because of what our Lord Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. So let us give thanks for the bread that represent the body that has been broken for us, that we can come before God in prayer, in his name, in Jesus' name. We thank you that as we come before him, they will recognize and be grateful and be thankful for what he has done for us on the cross. Let us pray. Our Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you have done for us. And even as we cannot understand what is going on in this world, both in the pandemic as well as in politics all over the world, not just in Malaysia. But yet, we know that we have you and you have us as your children because our Lord Jesus Christ came and died for us on the cross. So Father, we thank you for what you have given to us that we can call you our Father. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give thanks for the cup. Let's pray. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you that you are the living God that is the source of all life. And this life that we speak of is just not only our heartbeat, but also for our spiritual life and the internal life that you are provided for us. We thank you that this life, this eternal life is possible because of the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you that we can trust in the blood of the Lamb. We can trust in you as our living God, even in the midst of all the storms that we are facing too. And so, Lord Jesus, we thank you for this peace that surpasses all understanding because of your sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. And so this morning, we just want to continue to worship you, to thank you for everything that you provided for us. Thank you that, Lord, as we have prayed, that even in the storm, we can remain still because you are in control. Accept our praises, accept our thanks. We should continue to worship you, to remember you by taking this cup as worship to you in your son's most precious and holy name. Amen. Let's give thanks for the offering. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this privilege that we are your children. And we thank you for the privilege that we can come and work alongside you, Lord, for the furtherance of your kingdom and for your glory and honor. And even as we continue to give our tithing on a regular basis, Father, 
we pray lord uh that this will be used mightily and you will lead the leadership in how we should make use of this offering father for we give you thanks in your son's most precious and holy name amen morning church uh it's good to be back to this sunday to come together to meet like this to remember our lord jesus christ and our heavenly father we have our sunday school uh, again on zoom at 11 a.m and we encourage all of parents and uh, to bring their friends children as well because i heard that it is a happening place and uh, and uh, not only is it a happening place you get to, to know about our lord jesus christ and the wonders of him next slide it's just a reminder that we have our bgc corporate prayer meet this coming tuesday on the 24th of august at 8 30 pm via zoom uh, the link will be sent out to you all uh, on the day itself on tuesday so i encourage all of you to come together because as we come together and body life in corporate life uh, it brings glory and brings worship to our lord jesus christ next slide this is to remind you that we have our bgc business meeting on the 3rd of september which is a friday at 8 30 pm we will present the financial accounts the accounts are still being audited so we'll present the unaudited accounts uh, i'll just give you our church direction we just request that you submit the questions to us by the 22nd of august so that we can do uh, whatever that needs to be done uh, we ask for your cooperation that on the night itself uh, when we meet together you will identify yourself in the zoom by keeping yourself on putting the video mode on uh, even as we meet together uh, next slide just to let you know that all our sermons are now available on the link that you see on your screen uh, the link will also be provided through pgc communication all you have to do is type the sermon and uh, or the topic and it will lead you uh, to the message that you are seeking okay are you looking for next slide NECF, just a reminder, I'm sure you, you will notice that uh, via BGC communication, we're sending you the daily prayer list uh, so you can actually refer to it uh, on our 40 days fast and prayer under NECF. Next slide. We have our PIT conference, uh, Partners in the Harvest Conference 2021. It's on 18 September, 2020 uh we will send this out under bgc communication as well because it's a bit too small for you to see the link on how to register and the details so we will send out this link again on the bgc communication next slide before i pass this time to dr coming on the message uh just to give you all a heads up um Bangsa gossip center now it's on facebook uh, we want to reach out to the community and Christians to alert everyone on our church activities. Hopefully, with the uh, cooperation and input from all the various ministries, uh, it will be more interactive in the future. So if you have a Facebook account, we will encourage members to click and join. Just do a search for Bangsa Gospel Center. And uh, one last announcement. Um, we are aware that the government has relaxed the SOP for places of worship where 50 people are allowed to attend, but the oversight met and we have decided to just to wait and see. We need to see the numbers, the number of infections dropping before we make a decision to open up the church. So continue to pray with us so that we will be able to make uh, and choose the right timing. Without further ado, I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Ng to give us our message this morning on trials and uh, Thanksgiving. 
Good morning, Bangsa Gospel Center. Thank you again for this opportunity to share with you from God's precious word. This morning's sermon has the title, uh, Originally Trials and Transformation, but I think maybe we can include the I, I title, Treasures, Treasure in Jars of Clay. And you can find from the chat box, the sermon outline, which I have uh, sent to you. I don't know how to send to those who are using YouTube, but I hope they will get it eventually. So, okay, we shall uh, share uh, on the thought of treasure in jars of clay. And our sermon will be taken from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Then let's read from there. I shall begin from chapter 3, verse 17, which says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the spirit. Then chapter 4, verse 7. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our bodies. For we, we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life is in you. Since we have the same spirit, spirit of faith according to what has been written, I believe and so I spoke, we also believe, and so we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and brings us into his presence. For it is for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. Verse 16, so we do not lose heart, though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are seen unseen are eternal. So this morning, I shall focus on the thought, treasure in jars of clay. Of course, given the circumstances, I cannot help but refer to COVID at the beginning of the sermon. Many people are already feeling depressed, if not desperate, after one and a half years of COVID pandemic. And of course, the undermining of our democratic system by self-serving politicians. As concerned Christians, we want to ask, how can Christians keep faith and persevere through these trying times? And so we thank God that 2 Corinthians 4 can give us some lessons to strengthen our faith so that we avoid losing hope, even, even if the current crisis worsens. How? Well, we are undergoing through trials and some call tribulation, though it's far from that. Trials confirm our vulnerability to discouragement, to defeatism, and to despair. We've got to give you the bad news before we talk about the good news. Verse 7 in chapter 4, we read that Paul refers to us as merely jars of clay or earthen vessels. We are called jars of clay. This is not a very complimentary description. But it's a good reminder that we are fragile earthen vessels rather than stainless steel or metallic glass. And I think this is appropriate lah, for us to live in Kuala Lumpur. 
after Kuala Lumpur means the gathering of mud. So we are just a clay, and it's good to be reminded, to be honest, about our fragile faith, which can easily be unsettled when life gets difficult. Isn't it true? We can't hide our anxieties and fears induced by the COVID pandemic. Before the sermon starts, before the service starts, we also talk about the COVID. And some of us, I read, seem to be confessing the losing hope in the country because the politics have been, uh, uh, all the political, political uh, maneuvering and abuse. So the temptation, of course, is that we want to withdraw just to take care of ourselves with diminishing resources. We can help people, you know, we can barely help myself. How can we help others? Like a Cantonese say, how to help others. Thinking about it, what a contrast. What happened to the audacious faith in our youthful days, when we saw these con uh, challenges, we thought the communists were going to take over South Asia. And we thought we Christians could master our strength to confront that. No, we had slogans like, change the system. There to be a Daniel. Expect great things from the great God. Attempt great things for the great God. No, we talked like that in our audacious youth, you may say. But not so nowadays. Perhaps the good life has softened us. And maybe our faith naturally has become weak and wobbly. We don't need much, but the present trials does confirm the truth of our vulnerability to discouragement and defeatism. And so our hearts resonate with the Bible, with the passage when Paul likens us to earthen vessels, jars of clay to remind us of our fragile faith and humanity. And this applies to every one of us, regardless of our state social, social status, whether poor or rich. In fact, I noticed the richer people actually, we can, the more we have, the more anxious we can become, you know. For the rich people, stock market crash means they lose hundreds of thousands of dollars. Some of my friends may lose thousands of dollars. I thank God I have not lost a single ringgit in the stock market. But regardless, our faith is always vulnerable whether we are up or down in the social location. So, indeed, I have already depressed you. Tough times, hard times, trials impress us upon us that we are merely jowls of clay. But before you get really depressed, when you were not that depressed before by painful reality, I think I should read the uh, Second Corinthians 4, 7. Paul has an encouraging thought. We are jowls of clay, yes, but we have... This treasure in jars of clay. Uh -huh. God has entrusted to jars of clay like us treasure. Now, why is God willing to use fragile vessels and then allows them to do rough handling in the storms of life? In fact, isn't it the case that earthen vessels are easily broken? But of course, they're cheap and useful. And in ancient times, perhaps today in some parts of the world, they used to hold all kinds of ordinary to wealthy things, to store food, drinks, grain, and when I was younger, in rice beans or jars, and in ancient times, even coins, you know, when I was younger, some of us, uh, some families uh, would hide some uh, uh, important things under the rice, in the rice bin. Don't forget, even the oil lamps were set in clay vessels. And so indeed, jars of clay may be more useful than we realize. And in chapter 2, verse 14, Paul earlier referred to uh, the triumphal procession by Caesar when he comes back after a foreign, victorious foreign expedition. He brings back all the war booty and how the war booties were carried through the streets in jars of clay. And likewise, the same imagery is used uh, about not so much the triumphal procession of Caesar, but the triumphal procession of Christ in his victory over death. He brings back trains of captive, including us, up to heaven. So, yeah, we are jars of clay, but Christ in his triumphal procession 
brings along all of us earthen vessels filled with his treasure. Of course, not just treasure, but treasure more precious than gold. And if you read from chapter 4, verses 1 and uh, verse 16, you'll find that we have this treasure, which is the ministry of reconciliation to God and transformation of lives. More precious than gold is this ministry of reconciliation to God and transformation of lives that God has entrusted to uh, treasures, to, to jars of clay. Oh, yes. Trials confirm our vulnerability to discouragement, defeatism, and despair. But as Paul has added to encourage us, we have this treasure in jars of clay. And in fact, he goes further to, 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 reckon, to assure us, yes, earthen vessels will be battered by storm of life. And in chapter two, chapter 5, verse 1, he says, we know that we stay in earthly tents, which confirms our temporal uh, existence, earthly tents. But precisely because of the vulnerability of the earthen vessels, they serve as appropriate illustration of the extraordinary power of God to use these fragile vessels for his purposes. Second part of chapter 4, verse 7. We read, I read the first whole verse, and we have this treasure in earthen vessels <coughs> so that <coughs> The extraordinary power, so that extraordinary power of God, uh, let me read, uh, I think I might, my, my, my. so to show the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. This is an occasion for God to show two contrasts. The contrast between God's supernatural power and our human weaknesses. God's supernatural power is the undeniable thing. And our human weakness is, is, is to be used for his purpose. It is contrary to the world expectation. To the world, we normal Christians are insignificant. But God uses normal Christians like us. Oh, yes, in the old days, he used humble fishermen. He used an impulsive character like Peter. He used an inarticulate Paul who, who, who confessed he wasn't a great preacher. And now... We shouldn't be surprised and we are thankful that he uses common folks like you and I. And indeed, God's power and the sufficiency is more impressive when he works through weak people like us in dark and difficult times. So what that is from God's perspective? What are we to think as earthen vessels? Yes, Trials indeed confirm the sufficiency of God's grace. You know, in the COVID times, in normal times of difficulties, we get so fixated with our problems, our losses, and we miss out. We miss out. We overlook the sovereign work of God in our lives. So, brothers and sisters, fellow jars of clay, it's important not to dwell on the clay or the circumstances but to dwell on the grand purposes and the sure and skillful hands of God the potter as he shapes the pot and brings out, make us fitting, and he fills us with his treasure and enable us to participate in his ministry of reconciliation and transformation. But nonetheless, we are still going through trials. Why does God do that? even as he entrusts us with this treasure? Well, firstly, he disciplines us with trials to strengthen us for his service. If we want to be in the ministry of reconciliation and changing lives, we must first experience God's grace working in our lives so that we may join him in the, treasure, in, in the triumphal procession to spread his fragrance around us. Chapter 2, verses 14 to 15, we read, But thanks be to God, who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession, and through us spread the fragrance of knowledge of him everywhere. For we are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. Oh yes, God first disciplined us through trials, 
And then secondly, he uses trials to turn us into channels of blessings in ministry. Isn't that our calling? I think we have forgotten that sometimes when we get so focused on our present pressures and problems. As we follow Christ in his triumphal procession, we can't help but recognize that, that we are not the helpless slave owned by the ruthless Roman generals, but we're happy captives following Christus Victor, the mighty conqueror. We're happy because while the Roman generals were oppressed and exploit the slave, our Christus Victor helps us to transform us through trials so that we become useful vessels or skillful servants and be a blessing to others. Look at verse 15, chapter 2, verse 15, which says, we are the aroma of Christ. You want the fragrance of the flower. The flower is best crushed and broken so that we can smell the full fragrance. Some of us came from our homes that in the younger days that used incense. So the incense must be put into the fire in order for it to spread through the whole house, Indian incense especially. Some of us want to be useful too for the, for the victor. Well, we begin as the iron bar. The iron bar must be hammered, must be put red hot into the flame, hammered, plunged into cold water, turned around, beaten flat, and then finally put to the grinder before it becomes a sharp instrument for the owner. You desire to be a sharp instrument for the owner? Well, you accept the red hot fire, the cold water, the beating, and the grinder. Yeah, 2 Timothy verse 2, chapter 2, verse 21 says, as we allow God to cleanse us, he, so he will, he will turn us into vessels for honorable use, set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. So, brother and sister, as we undergo through these trials and tribulations, remember God's hand is working on us, or to use a biblical metaphor, the potter is shaping the clay, and he will shape with precision. He knows the exact touch as he spins the wheel, and he gives the assurance that uh, even when we are driven sometimes to limits end, to the end of our tethers, but There'll be no breakage. Oh, yes, sometimes jokingly when friend asks me, how are you, brother? I say, oh, brother, oh, yes, the water is coming up to my, to my nose, but I'm still breathing, but I'm still breathing, you see. Thank God, I'm still breathing. In fact, the marvel is I have not gone under. Oh, yes, more than ever, I realize my limitations, but I'm also surprised by the resilience I, I have, which I didn't know is there. And I can only proclaim with gratitude, not I, but the grace of God. So yes, God first, uh, first used the trials to discipline us. Then he turns us into channels of blessings for his ministry. And indeed, in the process, he perfects our strengths through our weaknesses when we are exposed to the trials. Oh yes, Paul speaks from experience. It's not just theorizing. Look at verses 9 to 10, where he lists out four antithesis about how uh, God's grace is sufficient. He has four contrasts. He, we are hard pressed, but not crushed. Hard pressed indeed, but not crushed. Despite overwhelming set of problems, if you talk about problems, uh, Paul got more problems than many of us. You know, he was physically exhausted, mentally tortured, spiritually <coughs> uh, went through all the opposition. Socially, he was chased. He suffered hunger, beating, <coughs> imprisonment, stoning. Stoning means people want to stone you to death. No. Shipwreck in the sea. Any one of us would have given up already. But he says, hard pressed, but not crushed. Then he says, we are perplexed, but not in despair. We are at our wish end, but we are not at our hope's end. This is a play of Greek word there, actually. You may notice, huh? Well, there's no time for self-pity, you may want to say. Uh, we understand where we are, but we still are not 
in despair. Brother and sister, one and a half year of COVID, or maybe even more, with God's grace, let us not be in despair. Paul said he was persecuted, number three, but not abandoned by God. Yes, Paul was a fugitive hunted down by his adversaries. He knows what the Lord says in Deuteronomy 31 verse 6, the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. This is repeated in, repeated in Hebrews 13 verse 5. And then finally, the fourth emphasis is, he says, we are knocked down, but not destroyed. Knocked down, but not locked out. You may want to say. Well, do you want to go through all these things or not? As the Lord invites you to go through. I don't think we seek persecution. I don't think we want to foolishly go into this. But if God's will is for us to go through these trials, to strengthen us, to become useful instruments, that we may become the aroma of Christ, we pray he will give us the grace. And we will come out thankful, for as Paul always says, his physical weakness is perfected by Christ's power. He says in chapter 12, verses 9 to 10 of 2 Corinthians, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardship, persecution, calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. You know, we don't hear these things being uh, mentioned much in our churches for many, many years during the good times. Well, now in COVID times, we are thankful that scripture understands, uh, the, the apostles understands what we are going through and much more. In fact, Paul up the ante, verse 10, chapter 4, he says, We are always carrying in the body the suffering and death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. Two things. One, the trials and tribulations are not an end in itself. Whatever is causing us this distress momentarily in our experience is so that the life of Christ may be manifested in our bodies, in our lives. But for that to happen, we have to do something crucial. We have to recognize that the battle is not just the external pressure. The battle <clears throat> is the old man in us the sinful self in us that continue to resist obeying Christ. What prevents us from obedience? What prevents us from allowing ourselves to be fully used by God so that we become the aroma of Christ? It is our unyielding old self, our sin, to put it that way. I was so fascinated when I came across a poem, my first year of varsity, which says, O oh, sin, sin, thy miserable omnipresent. I think... <laughs> That has turned out to be true even after 50 years of walking with the Lord. And so the great old challenge uh, in, in Romans, put to death the old man so that the new life in Christ or may be evident. You know, the grand old word, mortification, M-O-R-T-I-F-I-C-A-T-I-O-N. Not much heard of lah for a long, long time. Lah. Put to death, mortify the old man in us. The sinful self. So that in verse 11, for we who live are always being given over to the death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in a mortal flesh. When you know the purpose of God in allowing us to go through all these disciplinary trials and tribulations, in verse 16, Paul says, So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. There is a bright side to the dark times. There is a renewal. As we renew day by day, we receive blessings. As we overcome the, the inner self, uh, old self, the external self is nothing in comparison. And then our blessing is eternal. 
Now, First Peter 1, verses 6 and 7 says, In this, in all these tests and trials, you rejoice. Though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that perishes through it as it is tested by fire. So the faith more precious than gold may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So look beyond the trials and let us be reminded of the great truth of the wonder workings of God and the out blesses outcome as we learn to trust in him. But I think perhaps many of us may have forgotten that in the good times and the good life may have tempted us to pander to the old self that we need to now be reminded that we are called to become channels of God's blessing. And so we let us open our lives afresh so that God can work afresh in our lives. Crucify the old self so that the new life in Christ will shine anew in us. Now, easy said, uh, huh? all the words very hesitant, man, uh, uh, like our great Augustine say, Oh Lord, give me virtue, but not yet, but not yet. We're hesitant because to die to the self is a very painful, self, painful process. But precisely when we learn to die to the self, God's grace shines through us. We become the aroma of Christ. We will share uh, with, with, with great joy the verse we learned when we first became Christians in Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live but Christ who lives in me, in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And you see, uh, Paul went through these four entities, perplexed but not despair, persecuted but not abandoned, knocked down but not destroyed. What is the secret of Paul's perseverance? Uh? Uh -huh. He was not looking at the trials. He was looking at Christ. And that's why right from the beginning, I decided to read from Chapter 3, verse 18, where he says, And we all with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is spirit. Paul sets an example for us that we should fix our eyes not on the problem, but on the potter, not on our talents, not on our training not on our experience, but on Christ, the Christus Victor, who is leading us and who through his spirit will transform us from glory to glory. Fix our eyes on the Victor who goes ahead of us. Now, this is a law of life, which says we become what we gaze at. Right. When I was teaching many years ago, I had a colleague who was pregnant and she was expecting a baby. And then I asked her, oh, you're looking at all these beautiful pictures. Huh? So you Allah, I want to look at the beautiful pictures, the pictures of the beautiful babies so that my baby will come out beautiful. In my heart, I said, oh, boy, okay. Sounds, seems like she hasn't read anything about genetics. Obviously, she wasn't a biology teacher. But she got it right at one point, and that is we become like the people we gaze upon. We become like the heroes, our heroes and role models. And so, by the same token, if you gaze and contemplate Jesus Christ, as you behold Jesus Christ, steadily, day by day, you will become like him and you will reflect his glory. In other words, you become more Christ-like, which is the concrete expression of the fruit of the Spirit. And then indeed, you become the aroma of Christ. You know, the kind of Christian who really attract me all the years, not the flamboyant type, not the one up the stage, you know, in the spotlight, who display great confidence. But no, I like to go beside this kind of people who have gone through life a lot of difficulties in life, and yet they display a gentleness. There's no bitterness, no regret, but a gentleness that exhibit the, the, the qualities of Christ. I get encouraged by this kind of people, not the flamboyant type, but a quiet, confident person who has tasted 
and testify to the sufficient grace of Christ. So trials confirms the sufficiency of the grace of Christ. And now that we have that, brothers and sisters, let us share God's treasure of transforming ministry to build up one another. Oh yes, to recap, we thank God that despite our fragility, He has entrusted to us His spiritual treasure of this ministry. And as bearers of God's new covenant ministry of reconciliation transformation, let us go out of the way to encourage one another to persevere. Now, some of us watch a lot of the rings. Huh? And Galadriel gave this file of light to Frodo because he will have to go to a very dark place to carry out his mission. And she says about the file of light, it will shine still brighter when the night is about you. May it be light to you and I, and I add, and your friends when all other lights go out. Yeah, better than fantasy story about light, we are entrusted with this treasure of the of reconciliation and transformation that will bring hope to those who are in despair about COVID. To my friends who are very, very, very discouraged by politics, way back in 2008, the first uh, tsunami, I immediately told my friends who were exuberant, aesthetic, brother, sister, Salvation does not come from politicians. Salvation comes from God. I know the COVID has become the lockdown. COVID is not just in the, COVID is in the air, but desperation, defeatism is also in the air. And so I think our neighborhood needs to be sprayed with the fragrance of Christ to dispel the foul atmosphere that, so that we lift up discouraged and broken spirit through our Witness. Indeed, I always say there's no better time to proclaim the gospel than now. When the economy or the political system crumbles under corrupt leaders, but our message will have credibility only if our lives are authentic and consistent with what we preach. Only because we've tasted the goodness of Christ, the grace of Christ, we still have and express this hope and comfort through these times. Now, I'm not suggesting that the church embarks on big, big outreach program, but ordinary people, simple treasures, simple jars of clay like you and I, with simple acts of obedience. How? Uh, first, let us just enjoy that. Again, the sim simple life, the code word in the 70s and 80s that were forgotten for 20 years. Simple life of contentment, simple joy and peace in the Lord. Can I? Can. I know because of the, 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 the devastation of COVID, we may have to forgo fine dining. We may have to live in Japan, you know. Or now we have to downgrade from foreign holidays to local ones. You can travel beyond 10 kilometers. And some of us, we're still younger people, you have to buy cheaper phones and older ones, cheaper cars. Can I? I think can no. We can live the simple life with contentment and peace with God. This is, I think, what really matters more than anything. You know, Proverbs 30, verses 8 to 9 says, in the, prayer, the prayer, Remove far from me falsehood and lying. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food that is needful for me, lest I be full and deny you and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and prof profane the name of my God. With the Lord, we always have enough, right? Enough. We don't want. How enough is enough? The world say, enough means more than what my neighbor has. But I suggest maybe even as Christian can allow a little bit more. Lah. Enough in the Lord means a little bit more than I need. A little bit more than I need. Something like that. Lah. So, but let us learn to enjoy the simple life in the Lord with contentment and gratitude. You know, I'm filled with gratitude every day for the simple things of God. I'm so, so thankful to God. But when you have that, let us renew our bonus to share the gospel to our neighbors. Now you can do social work and everybody will applaud you. But if you say the gospel, the world will hate you. But let us renew our hope because now more than ever, they are ready to listen to the hope we can share to them. I know most of us are insignificant. We are just jars of clay. 
But but remember, small lights look much brighter and are much welcome, especially when the surrounding gets dark, you know. Of course, small like we are, our confidence in is not in ourselves. Second Corinthians 3 verses chapter verse 4 and 6 says, such is the confidence that we have through Christ toward God. Not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything as come claim claim uh, anything as coming from us, but our sufficiency is from God who has made us sufficient to be ministers of a new covenant. This little light of light, I'm going to let it shine. We used to teach our Sunday school people how to sing. So, as it gets darker, the small light can be very bright. If you've been to the jungle, you can say that for sure. Of course, brother and sister, we don't want to minimize the ongoing pain and difficulties, the burden that continues, that sometimes seems to overwhelm us and our neighbors. And in fact, I hope we don't become so centered, self centered only to talk about ourselves, that we will accompany our preaching with community service to help those uh, display and uh, displaced and shattered by the uh, by the community uh, down uh, by the economy and i'm encouraged <coughs> to read of many churches giving sharing food and reaching out those who are indeed in need and um, to this fellow christian i say keep up the good work and praise the lord yes we talk about trials and tribulations the difficult some circumstances may not change immediately but we can look to the problem beyond the problems and learn to trust God and experience his grace. COVID and political crisis is actually COVID, uh, opportunities to make a small contribution to kingdom work. So let me just recap what I have uh, shared. And that is, first of all, trials confirm our vulnerability to discouragement, uh, disfitism, and dis and, and, and despair. Secondly, trials confirm the sufficiency of God's grace. And then thirdly, let us share God's treasure of transforming ministry to one another. And indeed, God is at work in our lives. I'll just end with this little poem that is found in the little monument to an unknown soldier. Uh, some of you may have heard me share it once before. This is how it says, I ask God for strength that I might do greater things. I was made weak that I might learn humbly to obey. I asked for health that I might do greater things. I was given infirmity that I might do better things. I asked for riches that I might be happy. I was given poverty that I might be wise. I asked for power that I may have praised the praise of men. I was given weakness that I might feel the need of God. I asked for all things that I might enjoy life. I was given life that I might enjoy all things. I got nothing that I asked for, but everything I hoped for, almost despite myself, my unspoken prayers were answered. I am among all men most richly blessed. And I pray, brothers and sisters, that we will indeed see the hand of God working through these circumstances. And as we quieten ourselves before him, we will share with what has been uh, 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 expressed in this little poem that almost despite myself, my unspoken prayers were answered. I am among men because of the sufficiency of God's grace in Christ. We are more richly blessed than we realize. And I pray we will share with the blessings of God with friends and colleagues around us. Let us pray. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we thank you because of your words in Romans 8, which assure us, despite all the things around us, all things work for good to those who love God and for those who are called according to his purpose. And indeed, the great chapter ends in Romans 8 ends that nothing can separate us from the love of God. O oh Lord, as we learn to trust in your sovereignty, in your sufficiency of your grace, Lord, let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. Oh, his wondrous, wonderful passion and purity. O oh, thou spirit divine, all my nature refine. Heal the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. 
Let the fruit of the Spirit be seen in me. Grant me grace all sufficient that I may be true and faithful every day, every step of the way, pointing souls to the Savior of Calvary. Mm -hmm. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, thank you, Doc, uh, Dr. Ng, for a uh, very inspiring message. Actually, I have one question. I don't know whether it's fair to ask you or not, okay? Yeah? But if you don't answer, mm -hmm. say uh, you can't. Um, you know, you we, we talked about uh, persevering in the Lord, you know, mm. uh, which we all must as Christians. But how do you see, um, how do you reconcile perseverance in the Lord uh, with uh, the mental health issues that are being very much in the spotlight nowadays, especially for the young people, you know? Um, are they different from our generation where we are asked to soldier on, you know? Uh, I, I'm asking this on behalf of a young younger Christians who are facing this because they, they see this, can they even fall in the same bracket of persevering for the Lord, you know, uh, uh, or diluting, diluting their, 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 you know, uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, difficult you... question. So I'll mute mm. myself and pretend to answer the question. Okay. I think it's a very important question because uh, <laughs> as much as you shared about uh, perseverance, but uh, because of the current uh, situation, you know, like Olympics and all, you hear all this are in the spotlight, all this, you know, so where does it leave uh, Christianity in terms of our sustainability and our persevering, our long suffering? Yeah. I, 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 I would say, first of all, that uh, there is no generalization in, in this kind of issues. Every individual will react differently uh, to the circumstances, depending on the background and, and temperament and how we have walked with the Lord in our lives. But basically, it's also true that uh, let's just say, I say all of us are fragile. Some of us are, seem to appear strong, but actually brittle, if I may say. Uh, but what I want to say is that uh, we have different levels. So, so there's some who are more vulnerable, but still there's some who are more vulnerable than others. For example, some of us have gone through the tough school of life. We become a bit more stoic. Others have been very, very pampered in the comfort zone by upper middle class parents, and then suddenly, you know, uh, they are faced with this in isolation. Prior to that, they may still undergo problems, but because they were in connection with friends, the, they appear to be able to go through it. Uh, but now in isolation, it's made much worse. So we, 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 our, our problems, our fragility becomes more evident, either because we don't have the resources uh, that we have toughened up through lives, we no longer have the support networks of support that we used to have. Uh, and indeed, it is true. I have to say, for years and years, the churches have not given enough focus on uh, strengthening our inner self, strengthening the new self in us that will weather the storm because uh, it was always uh, feeling good but not uh, actually having the strong inner self in the Lord we, and knowing where to draw resources uh, when we undergo trials and tribulation because the Bible is full of uh, of teaching that will remind us of the goodness of God that will strength that will give us in the old guru there's the promises of God and so so we have we, we we need to be more holistic and deliberate in teaching our young Christians uh, pointing them to the resources that we can find, find in Christ, standing beside them to demonstrate to them how these promises are actually working in our lives. We call it counseling, mentoring, whatever you have. We also don't have much of that. And then I guess uh, uh, at the end of the day, uh, nothing uh, encourages a person more than when a strong Christian come along and say, we don't know all the exact answer to the problem, but let us pray and bring the matter to God. I think one of the great blessings of pastoral leadership is that we can we should approach a person who is very discouraged. And then as leaders put our hands on this person after listening to the issues and say, let us pray to the Lord. I think you don't have to be an expert in, in, in all kinds of things, no? but you can pray and that makes a lot of difference. Not just psychologically, but God answers and honor our prayers when we pray together. 
I think I'm not pretending to give expert answer. I'm not just giving a simple Christian resource that we may yet need to discover. So have I answered your question truly? Not really, uh, but um, I thought it's better to say, let's pray for them. Not just in theory, but let's over the phone, talk to the person, lay hands on the person if you can. Now cannot, lah, huh? must have social distancing. Lah, huh? Pray together. I think that more than anything makes the difference. Yeah, I, I ask question because in, in a usual sense, our response always like, oh, why is this person like that? Because, oh, can't you just carry on, you know? <laughs> I suppose. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, snowflakes, <laughs> snowflakes. Uh -huh. That's how you insult people now. Mm. Thank, you, thank you. Any other questions for our Doc before we, we close in prayer? Uh, you know. Yeah. Uh, if if uh, can I ask uh, uh Tim on a closer step? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Come, let us pray. Our Father, we want to thank you for this morning's message. Thank you for Dr. Ng, who continues be, to be your faithful servant. We pray, Lord, that you will always be with him, encouraging him, empowering him, and uh, protecting him in all his endeavors for you. We pray, Lord, that his word will reach our hearts, touch our hearts, and pierce our hearts, Lord, so that, Lord, we may live out this word that we have heard from him this morning, that we are to be your witnesses in this world, that we are not to be discouraged by what goes on around us, but to cling on to the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. So, Lord, we want to thank you for what you have done for us on the cross again. Thank you for the hope that you have given to us, an eternal hope that will never be extinguished. We praise you and we honour you. We pray, Lord, that uh, you will always walk before us and walk with us, so that as we journey on this earth with you, Lord, we will do things that will bring praise and glory to your name. For this we offer our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.